Um, hey, I'm uh, here at Ken uh, in the Brand Innovator beautiful beach stage. Uh, and I'm going to have an interview with Brent Estevez. Uh, my name is Nuno Leal. I'm a partner at EY. Um, I lead the marketing team. And uh, of course, we work a lot on data and AI. Uh, and we're here for the week. Uh, we've met a lot of our clients, a lot of other brands. Uh, and, and I'm very excited to do this interview with Brent. Nice. Likewise. Uh, Brent Estevez. I work at Nike in brand marketing, uh, currently on the women's lifestyle business. Nice to meet you, Brent. Likewise. Um, the preparation that we had for these uh, meeting, Brent and I were exchanging some uh, notes, and I was very excited that finally we could talk marketing, and we will not talk about AI. Yes, yeah. Uh, yesterday, I was dreaming that I was in a developers conference. I mean, we just end up talking about AI, AI, which is, I mean, highly relevant. But I'm very happy that today we're going to focus more on the marketing side of things. Uh, so, Brent, I wanted to start by by asking you to give us an overview. I know you work, you, you lead a lot of the efforts of brand marketing in Nike. Yeah. Uh, but can you give us an overview of what you do? Uh, what are your main focus areas? Yeah. So, over the years, I uh, spent about four years on brand strategy in North America. Um led the North America running business. Um, and then I took a city-based role, worked in Chicago, um, leading our Chicago team um, from a city perspective, uh, just really working to ultra localize our, uh, our marketing efforts, um, activate within the city, partner with the community um, from a creator, uh, artist, um, on the online athlete perspective. Um, and then currently in the women's lifestyle business. So kind of re-evaluating, re-looking at how we are connecting with her on a lifestyle perspective. So tell me a little bit about, you talked about local, localizing the brand side of things. Like Nike is such a massive brand. So can, can you explain a little bit how it works? Like th th there is a, arc, a, a big architecture of the brand of course. Uh, and then you have localization. How, can you give us a little bit of insight on that? Yeah. So, uh, and it's, it's something that I think until I sat in that role, uh, it was something, you know, uh, sitting in the geo, coming in at a brand strategy role, it was, it's very enterprise level. Yeah. Um, you're managing kind of all of the categories, all of the areas, um, territories and like, and then working with all of the functions as well. Um, and you're telling the top line messages. A lot of those messages come down from global. They're big statements about innovations, about big moments for the brand, athletes, et cetera. Um, and I think when I was in the geo, you know, I, I didn't recognize the, um, how, how much it matters for the local community. So in, in North America, we had Toronto, Chicago, New York, and LA. And the efforts to the, of those teams to partner with the right people, the influential people in those cities. And it's people that from, you know, sitting in Portland, I would have no idea the way that, you know, people in Chicago back at, at that moment before I'd been there um, have such influence. And, and it's not it's not just like the people of the scale of Virgil, um, you know, or Don C or people that partner with the brand at a top line. It's people that. You know, most people wouldn't associate with a brand, but when we can build a, a relationship, when we can have them at events, when we can have them representing and people in the city really start to realize like, oh, they're they're tied in. And then um, I was explaining this to somebody earlier that I think artists and the artist community um, and now creator community as well leans on brands to help advance their industry. So the ability that an artist have has to do what they do it is in large part because brands are supporting them in, in ways that didn't brand. happen. Yeah. And like a lot of that's through their ability to, you know, take their work, build a following on social. Um, like the, it's the, just the format for how to be a successful artist has changed so much. Um, and I think that that's been like a great opportunity for brands to step in and be a part of the community in a really like rich and authentic way. So 100%. I mean, you, you touch a point that, changing categories for brands are typically sports. Yeah. Maybe localization is where it starts. So it's like yeah. early grassroots. Um, you talked about Virgil, you talked about a couple of examples. What was your favorite campaign that you can think of in the last few years? Do you yeah. have anyone, so, anyone out of them memorable? <laughs> yeah, there, there, there's, there's been quite a few. Um, I'm going to cheat here. I'm going to give you two. Okay. So, um, and they're both, okay. they, they, they are, uh, I, I love both of these campaigns for the same reason. It's, it's because I think at a top line, when we're doing marketing well, it really has um, the ability to change lives and, and to shape lives, to change cult culture, um, and to impact the world in a positive way. Um, 
And I, I truly believe that when it's, when it's done well, that's what it succeeds at. So the first is the Colin Kaepernick ad. So the 30th anniversary of Just Do It um, was an amazing opportunity. I was still in my North America brand strategy role at that moment and had the opportunity to work on that. And the way, the, yeah. the way that it came about was, yeah, truly iconic. Once, once in a lifetime opportunity to have a moment like that, um, to work on, you know, something that had such significant cultural relevance yeah. and impact, you know? Uh, so, you know, like, I just can't not say that, uh, having had that opportunity to work on that campaign, it was, Very it cool. was a beautiful spot. It was a beautiful piece. The entire rollout of the campaign was, was so successful in so many ways. And it, and it really did, I think, change the world. You know, I think purpose marketing is different now than it was. And I credit that a lot to Gino Fusanati who, who led that campaign and like, it created it through that lens. Um, something on a more local basis, we just talked about localization. So, uh, when in the Chicago rule, we took an opportunity to launch the Air Force One, sorry, Air Max, um, with like, you know, it's it's a storied innovation franchise for us. Uh, but it's a innovation that is at one point was a performance innovation. Yeah. Now it's a lifestyle like shoe. Fashion. Exactly. Lifestyle, yeah. So telling the innovation story of that gets really different. Um and, you know, we're how many years down the line of like iterations like that, that first, that shoe first launched in 86, 87. And, you know, we just heritage those original models, the original size airbag. Um, but this was about two years ago. We were looking at how do we want to launch this? How do we want to localize this? How do we want to make an authentic statement around innovation about a technology that hasn't actually been our performance benefit uh, for many, many years? So what we had the opportunity to do was through localization. So we looked at it, we took our marketing dollars, we put them against founding a school called Nike School Chicago that was centered around uh, building out and helping like build programming, build workshops, build access points to the creative community of Chicago that otherwise wouldn't be able to tap into the resources that uh, Nike can provide. Um, so what that allowed us to do was pull out footwear designers, um, and artists from the city and That's collaborators awesome. and many different significant figures in the world of design and bring them in and connect them in the way that they represent innovation, tie them to that localization and that like connection to that product and that launch. Um, and that was really how we were able to then kind of build that connection in like an authentic way of like, okay. So this generation, the youth that we are talking to right now is now connecting Air Max to innovation in a totally different way. Not about like the best performance running pro, uh, yeah. aspect that you can have, but in a way that makes sense for them in a way that like brought them in and provided them a true value. And I think that's, that's a key is like when you can provide true value to the consumer. And I, I think that's just going to be more and more important if you have authenticity yeah. Uh, and localization is a big part of it. It's like where people still have roots with yeah. uh, and, and going across categories, which is something that is very common now. Yeah. That's probably even more important. Yeah. Um, very well. Look, we talked about your role. We talked about Nike. I wanted to talk about more, more about your career trajectory too. Yeah. Um, we talked about this. You came from an agency background. It was a couple, yeah. it was a couple of years ago, yeah, seven, yeah. eight years ago. Okay. It's been 10 years now. 10 years ago. Yeah. How was the transition... Um, how did you feel at the time? How did you feel about it now? Of course, you work with the other side too, but yeah. tell me a bit about, about your, your trajectory. Yeah, I mean, I think the, like, I love that I started agency because you ne like, within marketing, you never, you're, you're always connected to agencies yeah. one way or another. So it's, it's good to like, understand um, you know, how, how to work with them, how to get the most out of them, how to provide the most to them. And I think that's like, the way that you had framed up the question when you had sent it over, it, it was like, uh, I actually think the, 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 my response for what the hardest part and what the best part is yeah. the same. Yeah. So while I gave you two answers for the campaign, I'll take one back. And, and <laughs> so I think the best thing is, um, you know, when you're, when your agency side, sometimes it like you have a set of parameters, you have a pretty tight brief. Usually if, if the client has done it well, um, and you can get to a resolution, you can get to a result for them with, with, you know, some efficiency. Um, and I, I think that's like comforting from the agency side. If the client's doing it well, um, when you get to the client side, I think at times you almost have paralysis of like, Whoa, like you're, you're centered around, like you're establishing the objective, you're yeah. establishing the tactics, you're establishing the strategy. And at times like the many, many different ways that you can build the creative out around that or build like your thinking out around that and allow the team to like, kind of like latch onto that. 
at times it'll almost slow you down uh, because there are so many different ways you can turn and like, yeah. you know, so it's a, it's like a flip flop, but I also think back to when I was agency and if I got a tight brief that new, like, you know, you don't always, you don't always see the full picture. So there's that balance of like the full picture can provide you some more insights sometimes, but it can also unravel you and leave you like trying to figure out too much. So I think like, you know, there's many different ways to do an agency client relationship and model um well but i think there it's always that balance of like when you give the full knowledge when you tighten it up and, and keep them kind of like uh really straight into what you want them to answer so yeah i mean uh knowing how the motion works it's always a partnership yeah um i think being on the other side probably helps a lot on the empathy that you have yeah uh, but i can totally see the two sides and how do you see just so in terms that i look at from your perspective in the last few years, there's a lot of movement into, you know, companies working very heavily with agencies, some companies doing it more internally. How has it been the dynamic for you? Um, do you feel like you have, you, you found a steady state and you have a good working model? I, I, no, I don't think there's like within this industry, I think it's constantly evolving and there Up is, and down. there is no steady state. Exactly. Right? Like as soon as you feel steady on yeah. maybe like that aspect of it, it's like, okay, something well, happens. How are creators creating content for you now yeah. like how are you partnering with creators and it just keeps changing it you know so it's like as soon as you get settled in one space it's like okay well how does that work and then how do agencies help you or support that or what aspect of the creator relationship are they playing so it's it, it's just constantly evolving and i think that's like again coming from an agency background it's 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 nice to understand that evolution and and like how, you know, just to be flexible uh, and also like give that grace too. Like this, everyone's trying to figure out, we all want to contribute. And I think maybe like the steady state is have empathy, partner with your, your agencies, make sure you're either, you're aware of what they need. Yeah. Um, what you're giving them, is it too much? Is it too little? Uh, and just have a, a constant dialogue. So like everyone's trying to learn, everyone cares about the, the end product and wants the greatest work to go out. Um, uh, so I think it's like each time evaluating, like what's going to get you to the greatest work. Yeah. Um, cause everyone wants to be a part of it and we all love what we do. Like this is an amazing industry. It's, a, yeah. it's amazing things we get to do telling these beautiful stories, but how we get there is different every single time. So. Got it. I mean, the, it's a good point that when you say that there's no steady state, it's yeah. really what it is. Yeah. And you were saying some areas change, like the creators, yeah. something changed. Now the data part is moving. And then I, I won't say AI, but it, that, that part will start changing yeah. the dynamics. Of but it's very good that you have two sides yeah. of, of the coin. And there's going to be agencies that can support with that. Exactly. And we'll agencies, know more than we will. Exactly. And like, because, you know, um, just some limitations on what we can do in that space yeah. for now. So others are going to get ahead on it and that's great. And yeah. that like, we'll lean on them. So yeah, just going to be that constant evolution of like, yes. you know, what, what are you getting from each partner agency or otherwise? So. Perfect. Uh, last question. What are you looking forward to Ken? What was your favorite thing? And this is my first, uh, oh, here you go. So, my first too. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So we're rookies. We're rookies. Uh, you know, I think it, it, it was, I always like Nike is very unique marketer. Um, we, I think we are we, are faced with great, great benefits in some regard and very different challenges in some regard. So I think my like, you know, excitement from, from this is always hearing, you know, there's so much going on in this, in our industry. Um, and I know we're not always at the forefront of being able to leverage it all because we have such a different remit. We have such a different opportunity with our consumers. So it's just hearing how other brands are dealing with it. What are they challenged with? What successes are they having? Where are they out ahead of us? And like, what should we be thinking on? And, uh, you know, and then like, there's just so much great work. You get to hear so many people talk about uh, what they've been doing. And that's just exciting to hear, you know, how this how this industry continues to evolve and, and push forward. So, Excellent. Well, I, I uh, expect that you have a great conference after this. And yeah. thank you so much for having the time to yeah, spend with me. Thank you. Thank you. 